I've done this so many times I should already know, but I'm going to look up the torque sequence anyway, just to make sure. Here's the old, our old friend. It even had a different click that time. No weird noises. Now we're doing 70, not 90. Last time we did 90 and bad things happened. Okay, nothing cracked. That's it. Nothing weird happened, I think. Hey guys, welcome back to Car Guy Fridays. Working on my Miata today. Um, got the whole cylinder head on. Got the intake manifold back on, got the engine timed. So what we're doing today, we're installing a Kraken low mount turbo kit. So we're getting rid of the Flying Miata turbo kit, Flying Miata manifold, and the dump tube and the downpipe. Getting rid of that. And we're gonna be running this Kraken low mount kit. This is the Kraken low mount setup right here. I have this sitting in the vise. Um, I already have the turbo connected. I have both the water lines connected and I had to shorten the oil drain quite a bit um, as well. I've already had this on and off the car a couple times, test fitting it, uh, getting the compressor housing clocked correctly. Here's the fly me out of manifold compared to the Kraken. First thing you'll notice is the Kraken runners are a lot longer. It's gonna flow a lot better. The Fly Me Auto Manifold is known to be really stout. If you just look at it, cylinders one and four are just pointing at each other. So these exhaust gases, when they're coming out of the motor, are just smashing right into one another. These work. I made 373 wheel horsepower with it. Damn! So I don't have any complaints about the Fly Me Auto kit. Mike at Kraken sent this over to me. He sent me out his low mount kit. It comes with the low mount manifold, a radiator hose, which is gonna be kind of hard to see right now, replaces your factory hose that goes underneath your AC compressor. It comes up right here to the mixing manifold. One thing you have to do to your mixing manifold is you have to modify it. This right here. So it's gonna be pointing that direction. Well, the compressor housing's right there, so that doesn't work anymore. So what you do, you just cut that off and this hose has like a 90 degree bend that goes straight into that. Here's the hose here. It's gonna come from your radiator. This is your AC compressor. It goes underneath the AC compressor. And then it does like a 180 up there. The easiest way to get the oil drain in there, attach it to the turbo, positioning the compressor housing directly into the intercooler pipe. It's really tight. It's a really short oil drain. So just be cognizant of when you're putting the turbo in, try to like line up everything while you're putting it in. Now we're throwing the turbo in there. Got everything attached. Gonna sit it down in here before laying the turbo all the way down. Got to get the oil feed on. Getting to the oil feed is extremely difficult. So I'm going to install it first. Then I'm going to set everything down in there. Now we've got the oil feed on there. This is the part that's a little more difficult. So I'm getting it attached to the intercooler pipe there first. Then, oh man, I'm going to attempt to line up the oil drain with the AN fitting as I'm installing it. Yeah, that's all right. Now we gotta get underneath it and look at the oil drain. So I'm gonna get on this ladder. I'm gonna position the manifold and then Brian who's manning the camera right now, is going to align the oil drain so that it just slides right on. Is that hole all lubed up? There it is. Yeah. I'm going in blind. Push down. There you go. Keep the pushing down. You're on there. OK. The oil drain and the oil feed were really not very fun. Like, it, the Fly Miata is definitely easier to install. This should be a higher performance. At the very least, this one's more aesthetically pleasing. It, it is, yeah, it is for sure. Oh, just lost a nail. What am I gonna do? Wrap some electrical tape around and go. Yeah, you're right. That's what you do in a garage. Uh, 
garage medical bandage. Yeah. Good as new. That's solid, doctor. Let's continue. <laughs> and not only is it good as new, it uh, cauterizes the wound automatically. So you don't get infected. I'm not sure that one's true. <laughs> The access to these manifold bolts compared to the flying Miata, these top bolts, actually they might be easier uh, to get to as well as these two here. The ones that might be more difficult will be over in the corner. I don't know how he expects people to tighten this one. Mike, how do you expect people to tighten this one? Hey, Mike! Mike, 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 Mike. Mike, I figured out how to get to this. Swivels for the win. Get your swivels on this. Intercooler pipes on, coolant lines. Always line up your clamps, kids. I don't know how many people I see with builds that like, will have one clamp here and then the other one like over here. Damn, these things are fast. Don't do that. Got the whole turbo kit installed. Now we have to make this downpipe fit. It's gonna require just a little bit of fab work. Normally he puts a V-band on it. I told him to leave it off because my exhaust is not stock. I'm gonna set it up in here, get a rough idea of where it needs to be cut. Right about somewhere around there. Success. I mean, that's gonna be so easy. The fitment is, is really good though. It's got, looks like it's got quite a bit of clearance. We're fabricating the downpipe now. We chopped off the excess right there and we've got the V-band sitting up here. Brian has measured, yeah. And we're gonna make a cut. He's just kinda, we're making sure that that's about the right size. It appears to be. Like, Measure once, cut, cut once, twice. Cut once and hope for the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we've got the downpipe tacked in place with the V-band. We're tightening the V-band because if you try to tack it not tightened, it's possible it'll be off by a couple degrees and then it won't seal correct. You wanna help me? disconnected the fuel injector harness. I like to get some oil in the bearings and stuff first. I don't like to dry start it. Gotta get a little more water. I already threw a bunch of coolant in there. She's thirsty. We're gonna start it up, hopefully. I think it's almost to the top. Hey guys, it's the next day. We got it running last night, got the coolant bled. We're going to do some logs on the ECU, do some pulls, try to find out if it needs fuel, you know, here or there, if it can take more ignition timing. This manifold does flow better than the flying Miata, so curious if it will take more ignition timing. We'll show you the process of how we do that, and then from those logs, we'll get virtual dyno logs, and we'll show you uh, how we do that as well. And just already, I can tell the exhaust note is totally different than it was before. Oh yeah. All right. 
right, so we're coming up to a stretch of road that I like to use to do virtual dyno pulls on. It's really flat, and it's out here in the country. So we're gonna come around this corner here, and we'll nail it from about 2,700 RPM. And then we'll pull the log off the ECU and make some changes if we need to. Here we go. Just did that pull. Looking at the data, the car wants more fuel. The knock sensor is more quiet than it ever has been. We are running in the low 12s. I'd really like to be mid 11s. We're gonna add some fuel, and we're gonna add some timing, and then we're gonna do another pull. All right, so we're about to make our second pull. We added some fuel, and we added a degree of timing. I like to step up on timing, like one degree at a time. Here we go. So something else I noticed on that last pull, it's not like on the Flying Miata setup that it would die up top, but you know, it would crest at like six grand and then it would start falling down from the butt dyno. This thing feels like it's pulling up top, especially after like 5,500, much harder than it was before. So we made a couple more pulls. We have added a total of three degrees of timing over what I was able to run with the Flying Miata setup. But the Flying Miata setup, if I ran any more than 17 degrees at the boost pressure that we're running right now, the engine would start getting noisy. The engine wants a lot more timing. We got the AFRs back into the mid 11s. On spool up, I like to have timing, or the uh, AFRs at like 12 to eight in spool up. And then after it spools up, we're mid 11s all the way to red line. It's pulling great. So I can't wait to get back and check the logs and see uh, how much power it's making. It feels stronger than it ever has. We ran the logs through virtual dyno. Previously on the Flying Miata setup, it was making anywhere between 350 and 360 on this boost pressure. We're making 407 horsepower, according to virtual dyno. I've proven that virtual dyno is really close to the dyno jet, but we are still going to take it to the dyno to confirm the virtual dyno numbers. I would like to have an actual dyno sheet that says 400. Making a ton more power up top. Anywhere after 5,000 RPM, it's anywhere from 20 to 40 horsepower more. I'm gonna attribute that mostly to the, the uh, design of this manifold. Mike at Kraken, he is amazing. Uh, you know, he really, really cares about the, the design of these manifolds. So thank you, Mike, for sending out this turbo kit. It's awesome. So thanks for watching. Hope you all enjoyed the content. We're gonna have a lot more content on the Miata and all our other cars. Like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for more. Until next time, thank you. Quit whining, you're on video.